I got a call about an hour ago, and it gave me some disappointing news. Uh, they said that they did find two cells that looked like sperm, but they were very pessimistic about it in the sense that they said that they weren't inclined to put you through the egg retrieval tomorrow. So I'm disappointed. I was hoping they'd say that they found you know 20 plus sperm. And I'd walk in being the hero, but, but you know, I didn't come in with great news. We, you know, sorry, Scott. What? Step at a time. So I checked in with pained and anxious this week. The pain is a combination of physical and I think emotional, spiritual, and all those other aspects. Um, I had surgery a week ago today. And to this point, we didn't know if I had sperm. And so the surgery was to surgically extract sperm. And unfortunately, they didn't find any sperm. Yeah, it's throughout this experience, a lot of what I've found myself thinking about is like legacy. And so much of that comes through children, our own children. And, you know, I, I wonder uh, frequently, you know, will the legacy be something different for me, you know? At this point, it will certainly be different than me having my own children or children that are my genetic material in them. Uh, but, you know, there's so much wrapped up in that. Like, what do we leave behind? What kind of impression do we leave behind on the next generation, including our own progeny? The only other option that we realistically have is to try one more micro testy. Open up the test one more time. There's about a 10 to 20 percent chance that we'll find something that we didn't find before. Would you, but I mean, same thing, like just exact same procedure. Same procedure. There's some strategies that we have to improve the odds ever slightly, but I can't guarantee better than 20 percent. And that's the downside is you go through surgery and you lose the testosterone producing cells you have. Yeah. For a 20% chance. It's fair. The worst case scenario, testosterone drops and you're on testosterone. You know, that's the worst case outcome. 
But at least you put the issue to bed and you're not thinking about it anymore. But yeah. then you're on dependent on testosterone therapy to keep your symptoms at bay. Yeah. No, I don't. I, th I think for myself, I knew after the last go round that we wouldn't go through it again. You know? And there are alternatives to having biological children for starting a family. Yeah. Very good alternatives. Have you guys talked about it? Yeah, a little bit. What are you thinking right now? I think you already know what I want. I don't know if you're ready. I mean, do you feel ready? Yes. I've brought up adoption or fostering before. I've wanted to go to sessions. You wanted to hold back. How do I know? I want, I want children. Who do you want to foster? Like infants or toddlers or? Yeah. What? I don't know. Those sound good. I mean, we have to explore it further. We have to learn about it. But yeah, children, infants, toddlers, that would be a good start. I mean, what does that look like? I mean, if we do an infant or a toddler, like, what, is it, what does it look like on a daily basis, you know? It's just how we would parent. I mean, I know, you jump right to parenting. There's no lead up to it. There's a lead up now. If we were pregnant in nine months, we'd have nine months to figure out what we were gonna do. It's not like we're fostering right away. It just feels very different than having your own kid. And, you know, the examples that I had before me are within my family, a natural birth, you know? And I'm not, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying we'll never have a child. I just am uncertain right now in this moment. been going about our lives and trying to stay busy, anything to really be distracted and not have to think about the situation or confront the grief. Jen could still have her own kids. And, you know, we're both uncomfortable with the idea of using a sperm donor. She wants to adopt, or at least foster to adopt. And she's waiting. She's waiting for me to figure out if this is what I want to do. And in the, the aftermath of the surgery, I called my mother and she, she told me I needed to grieve. Yeah. And I think losing the opportunity to have a child of my own genetic makeup was a loss of someone that I would love, mm -hmm. a loss of someone that would love me, a loss of someone who would show me things that very, very few people could show me. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, Hi. 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 Good. Come on in. Thank you. Hi, Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to gather together tonight to indulge in good food and good conversation and just the company of one another. And I ask that we would seek to see your kingdom in all three and make it known to others. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Oh, our pleasure. I don't know that I've shared a lot about kind of where we're at, but um, our circumstances are in some ways the reverse in that I don't have sperm. It's, it, you know, again, it's, it's interesting what I've explored in this space, in this pause. And, you know, one of them is like, what's my understanding of what it means to start a family? So what's a family? And, uh, a lot of it's been my ego, just my own desire to have a child with my genetic makeup. Sure. Interested. Um, and well, I can tell you that the first moment that they put her in my arms, she was mine. Hmm. No doubt. Never a question. The first second I held you. You were mine. So, you know, I think to me, when I think about it, you know, yes, your birth mother carried you through pregnancy and gave birth to you. But we're the ones who were there when you threw up in the middle of the night. And we're the ones who changed your diapers. And we're the ones who were there when you... We're the ones who've looked on with pride at every milestone. And, you know, so there's no question that we're a family. Right. Mm -hmm. And I do understand your point about, you know, your ego... And thinking, well, this is a hard thing to accept, and there's something wrong with me. And I think Vicky felt that way. Mm -hmm. But you're a, you're a team, so you can't. You've got to just get past that. Mm. And I know it's hard, but can't decide, you know, like, if I'm not having my own child, do I want a child? You know, I've, I think since, since finding out, like, that biological children were not in my future, it's made me question that a lot more. Do I want a child? There's a part of me that also knows you want to be a mom. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's one of my dreams. That's your dream. What does it mean? You don't adopt. Well, maybe I can still be a foster mom. willing to say I want to go through the process of adoption and fostering. Like, it's just not how I thought my family would be. Mm -hmm. I think, Scott, I think you are very capable of doing a lot of things. You would be an amazing father, even if they weren't your biological children. Mom's name? Flopsy. Flopsy? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie? Okay, okay. Come on, come on. 